free public Wi-Fi. No three words since Star Wars prequels have ever created such enormous hope, followed by such immediate disappointment. We all know the curse of free public Wi-Fi. You're in a public place, say an airport or a cafe or a Mr. Beast's abandoned Squid Game set, and you're trying to connect to the internet to check Twitter or Google Escape Mr. Beast Compound How To, but all the networks have passwords. But just as you're giving up hope, you see salvation an open network called Free Public Wi-Fi. So you connect, but then, of course, it doesn't work. In fact, it feels like every time you've tried connecting to Free Public Wi-Fi, it's never worked. Well, I'm here today to do what your father never would. Validate your feelings. Because it doesn't just feel like Free Public Wi-Fi never works, it actually never works. In fact, it's impossible for it to work because, plot twist, it isn't even Wi-Fi. Bum, bum, bum. In order to understand what's going on here, we have to talk about WWW. Wi-Fi, WANIT, and Windows XP. Wi-Fi, of course, is short for Wi-Fi. That's right, Wi-Fi doesn't stand for Wireless Fidelity, nor does it stand for Wiley Pfeifferson, the name of my neighbor whose Wi-Fi I steal, nor does it stand for Wi-Fire, which is the answer Wiley Pfeifferson always gives me when I ask him why he spent eight years in jail. No, Wi-Fi is a term that was invented by a marketing firm called Interbrand because for some reason they didn't think its original name, IEEE 802.11b Direct Sequence, was likely to catch on. Wi-Fi, as you likely know, is when a router with a wired connection to the internet sends out a signal via radio waves that your computer can connect to, thus giving it access to the router's wired internet connection and the internet we know and love and are slowly having our lives destroyed by. WANIT is different. In the same way that Wario and Waluigi are dark, twisted, sexier versions of Mario and Luigi, WANIT is a dark, twisted, sexier version of the internet. WANIT stands for Wireless Ad Hoc Network, and basically, it's a network that doesn't rely on any pre-existing internet infrastructure, like routers. Instead of connecting computers to the internet, like Wi-Fi, WANIT, and this is important, just connects connects computers to other computers, each of which serves as a node in a new, tiny network of just those computers. But what does this all have to do with why free public Wi-Fi won't let me Google how long human can survive on Squid Game cookies? Well, that's where the third W comes in, Windows XP. The 2001 Microsoft-developed operating system that gave us an impossibly deep, rosebud-like connection to this picture. The free public Wi-Fi debacle can be traced to a single, obscure step in Windows XP's internet connection protocols. To explain, let's watch a short video. You may be familiar with the famous video of Matthew Perry and Jennifer Aniston explaining Windows 95, but did you know that Microsoft made a video for Windows XP starring the biggest TV star of 2001, Tony Soprano? Well, here it is. Look, it's me, Tony Soprano, Gabagool, etc. Alright, so when a computer running Windows XP wants to connect to a network, it uses a system called Wireless Auto Configuration, which goes through four steps. First, it tries to connect to any visible Wi-Fi networks that are in your computer's list of preferred networks. If that doesn't work, then it tries to connect to any non-visible Wi-Fi networks that are in your list of preferred networks. That way, if you have a Wi-Fi network that doesn't broadcast its SSID for privacy or security reasons, your computer will still connect. If that doesn't work, it attempts to connect to any WANIT networks in its list of preferred networks. And if that fails, then finally, if the computer has a WANIT network in its list of preferred networks, but it can't find it, it will try to make that network itself, configuring its own wireless network adapter to be the first node in that network. All right, enjoy Windows XP, and remember, forget about it. Wow, that video was great. He sounded just like Tony Soprano. Anyways, that fourth step is the key to this whole thing. You see, at some point, someone running Windows XP added a WANIT network called Free Public Wi-Fi to their list of preferred networks. We don't know who it was, but when in doubt, I choose to blame Barack Obama. Anyways, at some point, that person, possibly Barack Obama, was in a public place, and their computer's wireless auto configuration couldn't find a Wi-Fi network, and it couldn't find a WANIT network, so then it made itself the first node in the WANIT network in its preferred list, a network called Free Public Wi-Fi. And then, someone else in that public space was trying to connect to the internet, and they saw that there was a network near them called Free Public Wi-Fi. So they tried to connect, but of course, when they did, they weren't connecting to Wi-Fi, they were just connecting to that first person's computer as part of a WANIT network. But in doing so, they added Free Public Wi-Fi to their list of preferred networks. And the next time they were somewhere unable to connect to the internet, their computer made itself the first node in a WANIT network called Free Public Wi-Fi, and other people tried to connect to it, and the bug spread and spread and spread like a zombie plague or, well, a regular plague. 
Windows later fixed the bug in 2008 with Windows XP SB3, but seeing as people update their operating systems about as often as I update the SAM from Wendover channel, that didn't stop the bug. These days, only about 0.6% of computers run on Windows XP, which is why you don't see free public Wi-Fi too often anymore. But remember, if you're in an airport, stay away from free public Wi-Fi or your computer could be infected. Also, you know, stay away from people or you could be infected. So want to see what I had for dinner two nights before this video went out? This. Crispy Parmesan chicken with garlic scallion couscous and lemony roasted carrots. It was really good, pretty quick to make, and I didn't even have to waste time at the grocery store thanks to HelloFresh. That's because last week I selected this and other meals on the app, then at the start of this week a box showed up on my doorstep with all the ingredients I needed organized by which meal they were for and already split up into the right portions. This made the cooking process much quicker and assured there was no food waste at the end, which is good for my wallet and the environment. This is all entirely true. I was using HelloFresh for almost a year before they sponsored us and I genuinely value the way they make cooking quicker so I don't resort to eating unhealthy and expensive takeout or frozen food. So I'd encourage you to try HelloFresh. Click the button on screen or go to HelloFresh.com and use code HAI16 for up to 16 free meals and 3 surprise gifts.